everybody and welcome to this time-lapse demo. We've got this lovely lilac jar sitting in the sunshine and I've got a little iris down there on the left hand side which is not the same as what you can see in the reference. I do change it because I feel like the iris is looking too much at us and it just, I don't know, the composition's a little bit off for that. Anyway, I'll come to that when I um, you see me pastel the iris. So I'm working on pastel matte paper. This is the light green color. Now I absolutely love the color scheme for this. So I generated this image using a mid journey AI bot and my whole inspiration was I wanted to paint a lilac jar sitting in a green room with strong sunlight. Oh, it was lilac and gold, I should say, lilac and gold jar. I just find the gold really adds a little bit of something, something. Doesn't matter what color um, jar you're painting. If you've put gold in there, it just adds something. So it was actually a golden lilac. So that was my inspiration. It was based on color more than anything else. Well, no, and I really wanted to do a ginger jar style, like a ceramic pot of some sort. Um, so I chose this and you'll see I make quite a few changes um, to this. Um, so at the moment, the way it is placed, the jar is placed, it's too much on the left. And so there's a lot of space on the right, which is wasted space. And I was thinking, oh, shall I put a little vase in there at the bottom with some, I don't know, baby's breath flowers coming out? And I just thought, no, actually, that's just too complicated. Let's move the jar more over to the right. But for now, you can see I've putting in this very dark background, which is the wall. I decided to make these little fleur-de-lis motif kind of things to add a bit of interest to try and fill the empty space but I realized none of that was really working. So at this stage, you can see me um, putting in the background, but in this stage, you can see I have moved the jar over and irritatingly, I forgot to record that. But basically, um, I'm going to put that jar, as you can see, right over the background that I laid in. I did lift off as much background pigment um, as I could with a needed eraser. Um, but as you can see, there's still quite a lot of pigment on there. But my layers of pastel still went over quite well. So pastel matte is really forgiving. You can make mistakes and you are definitely able to change them. So you can see I also I wanted to keep the tablecloth vibe, but I didn't want to put in all those little details. Um, I wanted to keep it quite simple. I really wanted the star of the show to be this ginger jar. So you can see I've just got a very plain kind of blue violet tablecloth in there. I've also sketched in my iris. So you can see it's a little bit different. So what you can see in the reference photograph, it's just sitting a bit better. That's the thing with AI. It's not going to spew out something that is perfect. You, as the artist, need to make changes. Things that will work better for the actual painting. So you'll see me building up this jar. Um, I wasn't quite sure exactly what colors. I knew I was going to use lilac. Um, but, you know, in the lilac world, uh, you get blue lilacs then you get more red based lilacs and I used both to create this lilac jar. You can I see I used um, the Jack Richardson's violet set as well as the Terry Ludwig Dark Intense 2 set as well as a few mount visions basically I just got it as much purple tone pastels as I could um, from all different brands. Also used a, a fuchsia rose now I sprayed with fixative to um, try and get more layers. I just used the Spectra Fix um, because like I said, I had already all those browns underneath from the background. Um, but they kind of worked in my favor because on the right side, that part of the jar is in shadow. And that is the main part where that dark um, background was sitting. So it actually worked a bit in my favor. You can see, um, it's already reading as the right is in shadow and the left is in light. So you'll see me do this loads of times in this, is correcting the shape. It was quite tricky because of the perspective and all these little ridges and lines. You'll see me 
make a mark and then I'll go over with something else and make another mark but that's just the whole process of me trying to build up to make sure that the shape of this jar is correct because if the shape is wonky if the lid is sitting wonky or anything's wonky it's going to let the whole painting down when it comes to man-made things objects it's really important to get something like your structures correct otherwise it's going to be an eyesore and your eyeball is going to go straight to those mistakes which we really don't want so putting in the gold little um knobby there i'm sure it's got a proper name but i don't know what it is um using a mixture of yellows and dark ochres as well as this Bista is what you could well what you saw me have in my hand two seconds ago which is like a dark how do I explain it? Kind of like a greeny gold color by Karen Dash. Really, really useful pastel pencil to have. I use it for many different subjects. So you can see I'm using a mixture of the pastel pencils, hard pastels, as well as my soft pastels. Anything that I need. If I feel like I need a sharper line, then I'll go in with the pastel pencil. Um, if the pastel pencil isn't laying down quite enough pigment, I'll go in with a hard pastel. Um, so that's just another uh, process. I use everything to try and get my painting to work. So the gold oranges work really well in the golds. Like you can see, it's not reading as, oh, that's an orange. It's reading as, oh, that's a dark part of gold. Um, and that was just like an egg yolky color from Shiro. You'll see me, oh, I went over and did these ridges about a million times with a million different pastels. Um, you know, as I laid down a ridge, I'd go back over with a lilac color, which would take the ridge away. So I had to go back in and put another ridge in. But that's just my process. This is just what I'm doing to get my painting to work backwards and forwards backwards and forwards another reason why pastel mat is just such a good paper it allows you to make mistakes so you know you can come back over if you've used the wrong color no problem come back over with another color if you've put something in the wrong you know you've put a line in and it's the wrong place with the pastel mat no problem go over it with something else and try and correct your lines it's just such a forgiving paper and I make a lot of mistakes so I really, really like pastel matte for that. Um, so putting in a little bit of the reflections, you can see a little bit of the reflections from the window are reflecting onto um, the jar. Sometimes when you do detailed work like this, it's really important, actually it's always important to step back from your work, whether you're doing details or not. But particularly I find when you're doing details and your face is right up against your paper and you've been doing the same sort of thing for half an hour or 40 minutes, take a step back. Because from looking at it for so long, you're like, oh, this is looking like a big fat mess. But when you step back, you can go, oh, yes, that doesn't look like a mess. Or, oh, I actually need to change that. That's looking a little bit strange. Really important to step back from your work. And I do that. I do that often. I probably step back from my work every 10 minutes, give or take, say, um, just to make sure that I'm happy with the way everything's looking. And also, when you step back, it's like you can see the things that you still need to do or like little corrections that you need to make. So it's really, really important to step back. So you can see I'm adding a little bit of gold into the reflections at the bottom there. The gold that's actually coming up, um, reflecting onto the actual jar itself, uh, onto the lilac part. That's important to remember those sorts of little details. Um, uh, I'm also going around now with some iridescent colors. They're mostly from Sennelier. So you've got um, like a yellow gold as well as more of a brownie gold. And I've sprayed that with fixative, quite a bit of fixative, because you'll find that the iridescent pastels, the glitter particles do tend to get a bit everywhere. So I do like to use a fixative to spray those in place. And I've only started doing that um, uh, my last few paintings. I never used to do it. I never used to use fixative. But now that I've found a fixative I really like, um, I actually use fixative in my work. The fixative I'm talking about for 
um, whilst you're pastelling is the Degas fixative by Spectrafix. And the fixative I use at the very end is a beautiful fine mist by Della Rowney Colorless Fixative Spray. And it, ha it, it, it actually doesn't change the color of your pastel. It's amazing. The mist is so, so fine. And you do a few layers of that. So I started out with this iris and as you can see in the reference down at the bottom there it's a white iris and I decided to make it a little bit more peachy because I thought mm, let me play a little bit with the color scheme here you know the peaches and the lilacs um, but I changed my mind because the end painting that peachy lilac uh, that peachy iris was popping out too much and it's not the star of the show the gin the the, the jar is the star of the show so you'll see me build this up with peachy tones I'm using some dark grays to get my shadow parts in there but you'll actually see that I change it and I think it's definitely um, a good thing that I did and again thank you pastel mat because it was due to the paper that I used that I was able to make all these changes. Um, I don't think I've actually done a piece where I've had to do as much changes as what I did in this piece. Um, I just got stuck right in. I guess it could have saved me a few heartaches if I had done a initial sketch, a color sketch of everything. But I don't tend to work like that, to be honest. So I felt like the windows were a little bit bare. So I decided to add in that little stained glass motif that you can see there. In the actual reference photo, you can see there's like iris leaves or something. It just didn't really make sense. Um, I didn't feel like it was a good enough reference to do iris leaves. So I just kept it simple and copied what was already there. So if you've enjoyed this, you can see this um, in four parts in real time over on my Patreon channel, where I've got quite a few um, demos now. Um, lots of still lives on there, but there's also some flowers, uh, animals, a bit of landscape. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description below. So you'll see me just finishing off the vase here. I'm lightening where I need to lighten fixing my edges and then going in with my dark purple and the purple iris just worked so much better but thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye for now